Take off, shake, come out, entry. That's it, in less than two seconds, and they've got to get it as good as possible. My name is Steve Hake, and tonight we're at the wonderful Plymouth Life Centre, and we'll be unpicking the science behind diving. We'll be thinking about what it takes to be a diver, to jump off a 10 meter platform, to overcome those emotional fears of an Olympic event, to think about timing, and to actually learn what a coach actually tells the athletes on the day. There are four phases to every dive. It starts off with the takeoff, which is paramount, because that's where you generate the rotation that's necessary for that dive. There's the shape, and in the shape, the diver is actually using visual cues so they know exactly where they are in the air with relation to the water. There's the come out from the shape, and then the, modi from, the movement from that into the entry, and obviously the entry into the water as splashes as possible is what the judges want to see and what the divers want to perform. Well, when I was a young coach, I ended up going to um, university in order to do a degree in human movement because I realised how much science there was in, in diving. You know, my specialisms were biomechanics, and diving is biomechanics. You know, the science of movement, how different things interrelate with others, how you make rotation happen, how you make dives safe, um, how you create height and power and all the rest of it um, is very, very important. And the other side was psychology. Sport generates intense emotions in the in athletes in that people want to do so well. And as a consequence, those sort of emotions of anxiety just kick in. Sometimes they're like, it, invasions of the mind where the person is wanting to think about one thing and or the anxiety kicks in or the emotion kicks in and steers their thoughts and everything elsewhere. I'm pretty sure that when Tom was still on the end of that board in that final round doing his final dive that what he was thinking about is the focus on the process of the dive and I'm pretty sure that the other guy who was supposed to win it and was Bookie's favourite was not thinking about the process of the dive he was thinking about oh my god I've got to do it well oh my god I might come second Oh my God, my granny's cooking tea tonight. The tricks are really to practice your mental game and anticipate what it's likely to be in front of a massive crowd or, or where you're trying to achieve your personally important goal and, and replay that in your mind so that you, you see yourself performing very well. Some people would listen to music, some people want to go for a walk, others would want to talk to people. And it's recognising what works for you and if that works next time, maybe I can tune that up a bit. What sort of music should I be listening to? So I put this sort of track on, that sort of track, and I put this track, if I put this track on, does it make me more aroused? It's exploring, tinkering with those sorts of things. Works better when you do it in consultation with a professional because they can help you sharpen that and process quickly. But it is about thinking through what works for you and sharpening that process so that you can get the best out of yourself. My name is Alan Wing, I'm Professor of Human Movement and Psychology. The aspect of diving that I'm interested in here is the synchronisation between two people coming off the board. How does one diver correct for the other's changes in performance from one dive to the next? The timing of the arms, the timing of the crouch, the timing of the block should all be together. Guys. There are two aspects of synchronised diving. There's the explicit timing when you try to jump off together, and then the other part, which is more emergent timing, less explicit, is when they are uh, doing the somersaults through the air as they enter the water. That second part, they can't really adjust very much at all. All they can do in real time is adjust the way they do that takeoff. You can see the takeoff and the somersaulting is pretty spot on. There is just a little bit of difference and discrepancy within the come outs which is something that we've discussed. Um, let's see if we've got a very slow motion one for you. Synchronicity, spot on. The drop into the crouch, the arms slow down, the timing of the arm swing as well is absolutely in. And the block, and from a synchronized point of view, it doesn't get much better than that. At one point here, when the camera's in line, you almost can't see the second diver. And then we see Tom, or Pete rather, kicking out just that little bit earlier. So do we mess about with that bit at the bottom, or do we risk spoiling the entry because they're trying to mess about with something in the middle of a dive that takes less than 1.8 seconds to do? And again, that's possibly something that science can help us with, that there may be a way of doing that to make this that little bit of difference. I'd like to analyse the sequence of trials where they're jumping, diving, and say how do they adjust, and can they adjust better? 
our new little sensors that we're using could be put in plastic bags, tuck down the shorts and off we go. With this kind of field study we can look at how is the brain really controlling movement in a context which is providing the best stimulus there is to make people do better and better. Well, I guess a lot of the science has remained the same. You know, good old Newton, when the apple fell on his head, uh, the, the laws of mechanics are the laws of mechanics. What has happened is our understanding around how movement of the body can, can work with using those mechanics, and therefore the dives have got progressively more and more difficult as we've understood more. So I think it's important for the coaches to understand as much as they can do about how science can interrelate with sport, but it's also great to get the experts to come in to give us that little bit of advice sometimes as well. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. I don't watch a huge amount of diving, but I'm definitely going to be watching a lot more in the future. I was just saying the psychological aspects of it. I just can't imagine what it's like to be up there before an event. I like the demonstrations. Yeah. But I like, like the Tom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a number of things that go into winning a gold medal. A lot of it is endeavour, perspiration, coaching. But the difference between not getting a medal and getting a medal can sometimes come down to the science behind the sport and the things that we do as scientists. At these Royal Institution lectures, we've learned a little bit about that science and what it takes to be an elite performer.